what is going on guys welcome back to another chef's garage video today we are getting behind the wheel of this 2023 audi a3 premium plus today we are going to direct take do a pov drive this car show you around it and i'm going to tell you guys why this car is a good and bad car at the exact same time now this video is mainly not my opinion on this car well it is but you know you guys already know my opinion about this car i don't like it but that does not mean that it is a bad car at all today i'm going to take you around this car and i'm going to show you why it still is a good car for some people so without further ado let's get on the outside of this car and let me show you walk you guys around it So this car is a fully loaded premium plus trim level. This one I am driving has an MSRP around $47,000. However, the A3 does start at around $36,000, $37,000. To start off, Audi does not disappoint. It does make some very good looking cars and the A3 is no exception. I really do like the styling of this new A3. I do think it makes it look so much better compared to the previous generation sedan a3 this previous sedan a3 wasn't it was a decent looking car but this takes it to a whole new level walking around the front we can see we have the new drl headlights with the awesome cool little lines in it the audi big hexagonal grille which looks great do have some fake vents but you know but kind of typical of this car great lines down the side we have great lines down here and around the back as well i i think the a3 does look rather nice on the back as well and additionally we do have obviously fake looking exhaust but that's typical audi at this point um and the beautiful looking lights as well one thing one thing i do want to touch upon too is this car does have amber turn signals within the red lights which is a really cool style points right there stepping into the back seat real quick now this car is normal typical back seat of a smaller car this is my driving position i'm five foot five five foot six and you know as you can see um I am quite far forward, but you know, you still have, do have a lot of room in the back seat here. Additionally, right here as well, if, if I decide to move over here real quick, you could see that, you know, even back here with this uh, backrest pretty far back, I do have a good amount of room as well. Now, one thing I am gonna touch upon here is quality, um, because in material, it's one thing you're gonna hear me a lot talk about, and just a spoiler the quality is not what you'd expect but back seat is is rather nice and comfortable for you know this type of car you have good headroom good visibility out the rear hatch there and you also do have a center armrest with cup holders but um pretty typical back seat nothing too out of the ordinary you have usb-c ports and you do have some some sort of control of air conditioning with this knob but Overall, fairly decent and normal, typical back seat. Um, real quick, let me just show you the trunk and let's get behind the wheel of this A3. This car has around 12 to 13 cubic feet of cargo space. As you can see, my dad has a lot of sports equipment and chairs back here, but fairly decent cargo room. He can fit all this stuff in it, so you can see that it's fairly practical but we'll just shut this real quick. Let's get behind the wheel of this A3. Oh yeah, before we go, this is a fully loaded A3, but the only option this doesn't have is the upgraded wheels. Um, these, this car is running on the base wheels, which I believe are 18 inches or 17 inches, 17 inch wheels. Okay, so 17 inch wheels, which, you know, they look all right on this car. 18 inches would make it a lot better, which are the upgraded wheels. So, behind the wheel of this A3, 
basically first impressions as you get into this car is this car has a very nice looking dashboard i really do like the look of this dashboard especially with these two vents surrounding the gauge cluster makes it look very sporty um and you know quality in here is well I'll be honest, as a big Audi fan, and I've been in all many, many Audis before, my parents had many Audis in the past, this one has definitely got to be the worst in terms of quality and materials, in my opinion. You we do see a lot of cheap plastics and vinyls in this interior, and that rather disappoints me. Um, but I'll get that, I'll get onto that a little bit later because, you know, this car is marketing to a certain type of people. Infotainment system, I love how it's integrated into the dash. Um, and like like my mom's Audi S5 I reviewed, where it just slapped on top of the dashboard here. I'm not a big fan of that. I love this dash design, how it's like integrated into the dashboard and it looks rather nice. And additionally, Audi is still one of the few brands that has physical knobs for your climate control and your heated seats, which are very nice to see. You can obviously control it all there put in eco mode if you wanted to the fan everything is right at your fingertips which is very very nice to see um down here your little shifter knob and your volume controls and more plastic with your parking brake and everything but this car does as i said is the fully loaded premium plus trim level so you do have the upgraded 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster which you can cycle between many different things uh, including your map your fuel and many other different aspects of the car the base uh gauge cluster which i believe is 10 inches is perfectly fine i like that i actually like that better for this car i don't see the need to upgrade to the uh higher optioned gauge cluster other than if you really like to change your the way the dials look you can do that so for example here is the classic one which looks fairly normal and the s performance one which i had it on now you can't do that with the base one but anyways without further ado let's put our seatbelt on and let's take this thing for a drive and let me talk talk about this the way this thing drives and why i why i don't like it but why that does not make it a not a bad car so put this thing in drive real quick and off we go so for this new generation of audi a3 it is based on the mqb platform which is the exact same platform used on the volkswagen gti now one thing that those cars do have in common is the platform but what they don't have in common is that they feel completely different if you're expecting this car to drive like a gti don't think that because this car still uses this even though this car still uses the same turbocharged two liter turbocharged four cylinder it's only making 201 horsepower and uh, 228 pound feet of torque which is pretty lackluster in my opinion coming from a brand like audi where they're they're um they are known to have have sporty um feeling engines and everything and i find this car to be the first Audi I've ever driven to not feel any sportiness from the engine and the driving experience. Partly, that could be because a part of the new generation of A3, this one I'm driving, has a coupled a mild hybrid system, which is a 48 volt generator um, that when you're not, if you're, when you're just coasting, it brings the RPM down to low, and as it did, it shut off the engine, which, in my opinion, has completely and some situations can completely ruin the overall driving experience of this car if you're talking from a car person's perspective. But um, I'm currently driving in comfort mode. We'll get into dynamic load later in the review. So starting off with the ride and then we'll go to steering. Ride in this car is as you expect for an entry level luxury car. It's smooth. It's refined. It's kind of glides along you know you're not going to expect anything out of the ordinary with this you know there you it can feel sporty a little bit for the ride but 
in general, it is just a very fairly smooth, normal ride. That same goes for the steering. It's nothing, su no surprises here. This car, you know, I'm surprised that this car doesn't have super sporty steering, but it's still fairly accurate and it's fairly nice to use. We'll get on the highway up here and I'll show you how accurate the steering is and precise it is. Um, but the main point I want to talk about is back to this engine. 201 horsepower in an entry level Audi, in my opinion, is t um, super, uh, what's the word I'm supposed to be thinking of here? Lackluster, um, doesn't really quite fit the puzzle in my opinion. Uh, I think this car should have at least 250 horsepower or above, you know. Once we get on the highway here, we can get see take a look at the steering. But as you can see, steering is very nice and precise. And as we floor on the highway here, let's put it into dynamic really quickly. Even di in dynamic, that was just a little bit of a pull there. But super not great pickup on the accelerator, even in the sportiest setting. And, you know pretty shocking that you know it's not fast it's not what i would expect from this little tiny car and i'll put it back into comfort real quick now moving on i do want to talk about this mild hybrid system and one of my main problems with it so as you drive along in this car um at some point the engine will just shut off while you're moving and i have a feeling that is that mild hybrid system now that's how this car does get its 21, 22 miles to the gallon MPG. But when it shuts off while you're moving, it creates a big delay in the overall, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? The overall feel of this car. Um, as it's turned off, you have to really push the accelerator to get it going again and I find that not a safety hazard but it is a concern to if you are in a situation where you need to floor the gas pedal it, there's a solid three seconds where the car has to pick up spool up the turbo and then get back up and going again coming down into the corner here you can see per, Again, m very precise steering. Then going back onto the highway here. See, like that's a solid three seconds for it to spool with the turbo. So, mild hybrid system. It is nice for when you're just cruising, but when you're driving the car, it can be fairly annoying. Now, my solution to solving this is I always turn off the auto start stop, which is down here, and that solves the problem. It doesn't turn off while you're driving. But again, another thing you have to do when you get into this car, if you don't like the engine turning off while you're driving, it's very weird. Um, moving on to quality of this car. Now, like I said, this is a a fully loaded premium plus a3 which is the highest trim level in the a3 uh forty-seven thousand dollars forty-six thousand dollars and it does not feel like that you know i've been in many audis so once again you know i'm gonna say that because you know i'm so used to you know the normal fifty thousand dollar audi of that I, I know and I know very well, you know, soft touch materials everywhere, hardly any plastics. Whereas this car, it's a really bit of a departure for me as that a lot of the materials that you're gonna touch like around the air vents and the dashboard and the seats and the door panels, it's all cheap vinyl and plastic, which is very underwhelming for at least me uh, for this car. Now, the type of person I do see liking this interior and liking the quality is people who are coming from lower car end cars than this, you know, Honda Civics, Toyota Corollas, Honda Accords, you know, those entry Nissan Versas, Nissan Sentras, Mazda CX, CX3, MX3, sorry, I don't know what the sedan is, uh, Mazda 3, 
that's what it's called. Those type of lower end sedans where they want to step up into a luxury car, but they just don't know if the Audi brand is worth the money. That's where I see this car falling in Audi's lineup. It's not for the people who really like Audi and really like want a nice small car from Audi that they already like Audi. In that case, if you are that person, go and get an A4, an A5, an A6, something a lot better than this. But to the person that like, you know, they doesn't know if they're gonna like the brand Audi or not, and they are coming from a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic, this is definitely gonna be a big step in departure for them. It's gonna feel like a completely different car. The materials are way better. The infotainment system is the beautiful German infotainment as it is. And the power from the engine is definitely gonna be a boost. You know, Honda Civics and Toyota Corollas, they don't have a lot of power. This car does have a lot more power. So that's where I can see this car. I mean, this car, for the type of person that's buying this, it still has the exact same great infotainment used in the $150,000 Audi RS e-tron GT or RS7 or RS6 in infotainment. So I, that's the type of person I do see buying this car. And I think those type of people are gonna be very happy with it. Um, but to, for the per people that know and love Audi like me, this car is not for you. This car, is, you're definitely going to feel to have the same opinion as me, that it is cheap. It's not the sort of same really good um, quality luxury car feeling car that you would expect from Audi. Now, if you are coming from another Audi and want this size, because one thing I do like about this car is the size. This size is perfect for someone like me, so for someone like you that has, that likes this small car size, because the definition of the small car here in the United States has gotten so big to the point where an A4 used to be the size of this A3. We don't get small cars anymore because everyone loves the, having such a big SUV. Whereas, this is if you like this size of this small car here we get in the United States, you know, I can understand why someone would, another person from Audi would buy this car. But if you are from an Audi and want to buy this car, I highly recommend spending your money on the S3 or the RS3. Both of those have more powerful engines, nicer interiors, but use the same body as this A3. And that's where I see the people from Audi who want this size car and that are going to another Audi are going. It's this A3, but it's gonna be the S3 or the RS3. That would be my pick, my sweet spot. If I was in the market for a small Audi and I was looking for a car just this size, if you like cars, if you like power, if you like luxury, go for the S3 or the RS3. Much better cars for the money. And I mean, you're gonna get a 300 horsepower, two liter turbocharged four cylinder instead of the two liter, instead of a 200 horsepower, two liter turbocharged four cylinder. So a much better car, much better performing car for the money. Now, as we take as we come into this parking lot and end this point of view drive, um, I just want to reiterate by saying that the A3 is not a bad car, but I do see the people that are buying this A3 are coming from Toyota, Corollas, and lower end cars, lower end style um, class of cars, and they want to get into the Audi brand, and you know, they don't know if this car is going to be if Audi is gonna be a brand for them. This is a perfect introduction car to Audi, in my opinion. It's the perfect blend of their newest technology, but as well as you to get the kind of, little bit of a taste off the spoon of what Audi is as a brand. And I and if you are thinking that Audi is gonna be a lot better than this in their higher end cars, they absolutely are. I love Audi as a brand, but this car to me, coming from so many other higher end Audis in the past, is just an underwhelming experience for me. But I wanna let you guys, I wanna know your thoughts on this A3 down below in the description. What do you guys think of this new A3? 
as a car and I hope you guys did enjoy this review if you did comment like and subscribe and let me know other any other cars you want me to do a POV drive up in the future and I'll see you guys in the next one peace